everybody i'm back in open ttt with the crazy stuff uh, today uh, second episode about second version of division in which we use the same circuits in order to calculate our division and that's make this uh, whole project smaller but it takes a bit longer time to calculate the division itself is actually built with the four elements programming loop it was explained in a previous episode uh, subtractor which was explained a long time ago in a separate video about two in one adding and subtracting with one module so those two elements will be not explained in this video the whole theory how this division works here was explained in a previous episode so if you're interested how this is working please watch the episode one because there will be no time to explain again those things it's going to be anyway a very long video so we start with a theory about uh, selectors how to calculate them and then i will jump into memory cells so i will have a chance to explain pre signals especially combo signals and uh, let's say maybe and gates and after that we will come back to our selectors and we will finish building them it is going to be very long video anyway let's start when i say that we are at initial stage it means that our train in programming loop is in that block with the letter i and it provides to our selectors a red signal which has a value one when i say that we are not at initial stage it means that our train in programming loop is somewhere else but not in that block with initial value and it means that the connection provides us green signal with a value zero our division uses two selectors one is simpler one with the three connections only the blue one and uh, the brown one is a bit more complicated it has four connections and it will be explained in a moment we start with the blue one the purpose of the blue selector is to load at initial stage dividend and when we are not at initial stage it will give me as output the value of the pit on the right hand side of that selector first uh, we need to define all possible signals coming to the selector and determine what results we want to get for each of those uh, data sets we need to build so-called true table so we have over here three inputs initial dividend and bit on the right and our output and we start with zeros so we are not at initial stage in that case i want to have as an output my bit on the right so the value of the bit on the right is zero so my output is zero now we go further this time bit on the right is one so in this case as an output i want to have that bit on the right the value of one now again our bit on the right is zero so our output will be zero and the last one our bit on the right is one so our output is going to be one as you can see when our initial stage is green it means it's zero I want to have it as an output copy of that bit on the right now where we are at initial stage I want to get as an output the value of dividend in our case is zero so we have zero now if we go further our bit on the right is one but our dividend is zero so we want to have it zero then our dividend is one so as output I want to have it one and again it's one and again as output is one so when is initial line is one or red it means that i want to have a copy as an output of our dividend so this is our true table now what to do with this what to do with such true table uh, to make it work we should uh, solve what call what is called a carnot map and the carnot map is a visual method used to simplify the algebraic except, uh, expression in a boolean function and so on so on uh, 
but it's quite complicated if you look at this I solved myself I think maybe three maybe four maps like this uh, and it takes quite long, long time especially when they are more complicated uh, but we live in a uh, time of internet so instead of uh, doing it by hand you can use so-called solvers so we have a carnet map solvers and I use this the first one on on the top over here I use this one so how to deal with this so uh, our selector the simpler one needs a three values three connections so three values we make it this way we are getting a ready to set true table uh, we have A, B, C. In our case, A is our initial uh, control line that indicates if we are at initial stage or we are not at initial stage. Then we have a B, which stands for our dividend, and C, which stands for our bit on the right. Then we have a Y as output, and we can have 0, 1, or ignore them. So we have a 0 or 1. So in our case, when I'm not at initial stage, I want to have a bit on the right, so my value. Uh, as output is 0 now when it's 1 is 1 when it's 0 is 0 when it's 1 is 1 now when we add at initial stage I want to have as an output our dividend so B so when we have a 0 0 we have 0 0 and when we have 1 we have a 1 all right that's simple very simple now just submit and you're getting that results uh, on the top you have maps maps layout uh, and so on so on but the most important is our function over here this is our function and it actually it stands what you see over here y uh, equals not a and c or a and b that's in our uh, let's say a boolean uh, logics that's our connections that for electric circuit we of course going to use something different because we are half uh, trains and press signals and that's our true table at the bottom so that's uh, let's say uh, in a simple way how to make it but before we go farther and start building those things I would like to go to our our second selector so let's have a look at the second uh, selector which is a bit more complicated it requires four inputs uh, because we want to select one of three possible events uh, so the first one uh, is our initial stage let's say that uh, tells us if we are at initial stage or we are not and when we are at initial stage we want to have a zero no matter what the quotient is difference or bit on the right we want to have it just a zero as an output then if our initial stage is uh, zero it means that we are not at initial stage then we will look into quotient and if the quotient is a zero it means that I not supposed to subtract and it means that I want to have as an output the value of the bit on the right and if it is uh, one if the quotient is one uh, my uh, output will be the value of the difference uh, which is created between uh, the I call it tested value and uh, divisor so that will be the value of that of that uh, output now how to make it this time we go straight to our to our website we this time choosing four values now a is our initial stage b is our quotient c is our difference d is our bit on the right so when I'm not at initial stage and uh, my quotient is zero it means that I want to just shift my uh, 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 brown register to the left one bit to the left it means that I want to have the value on the right so zero so when is one is one uh, so the same no matter what we have in our uh, difference so still zero and one now when our quotient is one it means that I want to replace 
the value in the brown register with a value of difference so in our case 0 0 so that's what we want and now we have a C is 1 1 so we want to have a 1 and 1 now we are in the 8 line we are at uh, initial stage and now no matter what the inputs are uh, for B C D we want to have as an output 0 because I want to become at because I am at initial stage it means that I want uh, just initiate uh, just the reset all the values in that brown register and to have it zero now if you sure if you in your circuit you have for example you will not have a let's say a line like 15 so one 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 you know that it will never happen you can ignore it yes because it will not influence your circuit and at the same time it will uh, simplify your uh, circuit so if you have a lines that you know that you will not have this set of value you can ignore them but you need to be sure that it will not influence your circuit yeah uh, so I'm pretty sure that at some point one of those sets could happen so I use it I'm submitting it now we have a bit more complicated uh, but only a bit uh, the output uh, we have now connections with the three values on both sides so not a and not b and d or not a and b and c and that's it that's our simple selector now in, in our case uh, those both selectors blue and uh, brown uh, will uh, require only one train so I definitely go for them with them but there are moments that you can have a very complicated uh, circuit and then it's possible that you could get something simpler by using uh, uh, open TTD uh, pre-signals, the, fe the, the features of the pre-signals and one of the examples is our memory cells and this is an example of memory uh, circuit uh, built with uh, four NAND gates uh, so-called uh, D-type flip-flop. In our case, in OpenTTT, I would have to build four NOT gates, which means in our case, if you build those nodes with my gate, that would be four trains. If you build with a traditional NOT gate, you will need uh, two trains per NOT gate. It means eight. So that's quite a lot of resources for just one memory cell. Luckily, in OpenTTT, we have a uh, possibility to build uh, things differently thanks to pre-signals and I'm going to now show how to build the memory cell actually with only one train that locks the memory this part is actually dedicated for less advanced players so now uh, before we start talking uh, further about selectors I'm jumping into memory cells what we see on the screen is a fully functional memory cell it's good enough for my crazy stuff circuits however it's of, of course it's not perfect like nothing in open TTD and actually the memory cell is that b this bit this part this is our memory cell but without the rest of the circuit will be it will be a uh, kind of useless so on the top we have uh, our inputs on the right bottom we have our output and uh, this track is our uh, locking system when the train is positioned at this entry signal over here it locks the memory so if I change input the output and memory stay uh, unchanged now to enable that change I need to allow this train to pass this entry signal I slow down this train for 240 kilometers per hour so it's going to be uh, very slow so to enable it we need to get a green so if I disconnect this and connect it back we're just updating this memory so it was red now it's green yeah <coughs> so it is working this way this advantage of this system is that uh, we can have uh, multiple changes to our system like this right now 
and it is changing yeah so which change was the right one yeah so to solve this uh, there's one of the method is to build some kind of clock that we allowed our uh, changes only on the right time at the right moment <coughs> but I have chosen a simpler method I have actually uh, memory cells at each important elements like over here this is a memory cell that actually keep the the result now keep the input to this subtractor stable that's why I have a stable uh, output from this subtractor <coughs> so I have a multiple uh, memory cells that keep the system stable so how this is possible that this is working uh, that's actually thanks uh, to functionality of combo signals so let's have a look at the combo signals this is not a lesson about the pre signals so just uh, I, I just want to show a couple things <coughs> which will be very useful in a moment combo signals uh, have kind of functionality of three signals so in this case right now our combo signals works like a blocking signals uh, so that combo signal looks into the block uh, it's green it could be green now if this is green it, it looks for another uh, combo signals or exit signals it didn't find so it is green now our blocking signal has a train in front of it so it's red but it doesn't influence the combo signal now if I change the signal into exit signal uh, our combo signal immediately become red and why now because it works this time this way it looks into the block it's green it could be green but now it's looking for the exit and uh, combo signals it find one and it looks on its face and it's red so it is copy that face and is red now that will entry no entry exit signal looks into the block only into the block it sees this train so uh, it is red and uh, it passes this red signal let's say to any entry or combo signals now if I change it for combo for combo yeah this is combo now so we have additional similar situation yeah so this is looking into the block uh, block is free could be so could be green but now it's looking onto the face of this one and this one is looking into the block block is uh, occupied by train so it is red and uh, so the face of this so signals is uh, signal is red it passes the signal to this one so this one is red as well uh, so it is working this way but now if I if I connect additional line and I get another could be could be exit sig uh, exit signal or could be as well a combo signal yeah so what's happened now our combo signal looks into the block which is this one this time uh, so it could be green because then we don't have a train over here and now it's looking for another exit and uh, combo signals it found two combo signals one is red and one is green in other words if you look at this uh, green is zero uh, red is one so we have a uh, if I have zero and one it means that our function and and gate is now uh, zero because this creates and gate now if I connect this to that track those both signals see uh, the train so both are red so one and one equals one yeah one and zero equals zero yeah but now if I connect additional track yeah and I have let's say blocking signal which is green uh, this time our blocking uh, our combo signal looks into the block it's green so it could be green but now it's looking for the combo or 
exit signals it found two combos which are red so it is red because it doesn't look into the face of this it is not able to see beyond that blocking signal because this blocking signal doesn't carry any information for this signal only combo and exit signals all right so now even if i have this way and i disconnect those those things oh sorry it should be this way <coughs> so now uh, a similar situation this is red but this is green both of us are green so this is green as well but now I, i'm going to show you one more thing so if i connect this way uh, now our combo signal is red no matter what we have over here so if i have this one green uh, or red it doesn't matter so what's happened now our combo signal logs into this block and this block stands for all that tracks over here it sees the train and it is uh, absolute priority for this signal to block the entry to any any train uh, none of the train can get over here because we have a train on the track so this is red it overrides the functionality of an AND gate so this could be considered as a float of this AND gate but from the other side it's very useful because I use it uh, because we can use it to lock our memory cell and now we're going to explain how this is working how those rules are working with our memory cell our input to this memory cell is green our memory cell is green our output from our memory cell is green as well now our second combo signal at input looks into our lock our train locks that memory and everything is stable so we can change our input and it will uh, change nothing with our memory cell and with our output now how this is working our combo signal in our memory cell the one on the right hand side looks into this block this block is empty it means it's green the signal looks for another combo or exit signals it sees one which is green so it is as well green now the left hand side signal uh, looks into block ahead it is green and now it sees two other combo signals one is red at our lock and one is green one and zero gives us zero so it means that our signal is green so it is green so now they looking into each other uh, in a kind of loop so that that's why they are green now output looks into the block ahead there is no train so it could be green now it sees two signals one is in our memory cell and the second at our lock the lock is red our memory cell is green so as an AND gate it is one and zero so this output is zero as well so green now let's have a look how this is if our memory cell is red our right hand side signal in memory cell is red and uh, how this is happen it looks into the block ahead and it see that there is no train it could be green but now it's looking for another combo or exit signals it sees one combo signal which is red so this one is red now the left hand side signal looks into block ahead it's green so it could be green as well but now we've got one red signal at the lock and uh, the other signal the right hand side is red as well so one and one gives us one so it means that it is red so now both signals are red and our memory is actually red now our output from our memory cell is red because it looks into block ahead is green it could be green but now it sees two other signals uh, which are red the one in the memory cell and the one at our lock so our output is red in this picture we can see memory cell update phase the train 
actually is at the bottom of our memory circuit. Our second combo signal at input, uh, which normally is locked, now is green because we have our green input. There is no train in block between those signals. Our second combo signal is green. It means that we allowing to update the memory. The right hand side combo signal in memory cell detecting this time train in the block. So this block now is occupied. That's why it is red. Uh, so no matter what the face of the left hand side signal is, that one, the right one will be red. Now the left hand side signal looks into block ahead like previously. It is green but uh, it sees now two signals. One is on the left hand side green and the right hand side is red but 0 and 1 gives us a 0 so this one is green. Our output from the memory cell looks into block ahead so it is green so it means that now it is looking for another combo or, uh, exit signals it sees two combo signals one is red in memory and one is green at the lock it means that zero and one gives us green so our output is green as soon as our train will touch the second uh, blocking signal it will lock the memory cell now we are looking at the moment when our memory is updated and input to our memory is red. Uh, like previously when our train is at the bottom of that locking system uh, the red right hand side memory cell signal is red because it sees the train in that block and now again the left hand side looks into the block ahead it's green so it could be green but now in our case we have a both signals red the second one, one from the lock, looks into the, the block that is green, but at the same time it is looking into our input a combo signal, which is red, so it means that the, the second one at the input is red as well. And now our combo signal uh, on the left hand side looks into both those signals, they both are red, so one and one is one, it means that our signal is red and a similar situation with our with our output it looks into block is green but we have a both signals red the one at the lock and the one in the memory so that's why we have a red there is still a lot of stuff to say about memory cells but i would like to finish it as i didn't say everything uh, but uh, uh, the, the video is going to be right now uh, very long, unbearable long. Now, as you can see, we have a kind of two kind of memories. Like uh, over here, this has a shorter track, this has a longer track. And why is that? Uh, because uh, the train in the programming globe, which is connecting connected to this memory, the right hand side memory cell, it travels at limited speed. Sorry, uh, normally it has a 2000 more than 2000 kilometers per hour but when it travels throughout this line it travels at 200 kilometers per hour so it's slow and the reason why <coughs> is just we have enough time for all those uh, all those uh, elements of our circuit to settle down and uh, w now if this train in programming like I said is very fast so Without this long track, if it will actually, if we do it this way uh, and unpause the game and start it, you will see that it goes a couple times, which is undesirable. But if I have it this way, now it has a longer way and it gives enough time for the train in the programming globe to, to pass the block. Okay, so only it does only, thanks to that, it does only, only once uh, the locking. Uh, phase. All right, so uh, I want to finish with memories and let's go back to our selectors. Now I think thanks to the part uh, about pre-signals, uh, combo signals, you immediately should recognize 
uh, that we have an AND gates in this uh, circuit over here and that's our selector, the, the blue selector. We have over here an AND gate with A and B, then we have an AND gate with not A and C and this is our OR gate which works perfectly for all those uh, elements, uh, all those circuits, uh, um, I call them uh, static circuits, all the crazy stuff uh, circuits are starting and, uh, but it's this OR gate has a very serious uh, flood which uh, can be very unpleasant in all uh, let's say dynamic system uh, I'll show you in a moment so our A is initial stage so I'm connecting this to the initial stage it, which is goes this way this way and it's over here then our of course not A goes a bit different it goes almost to the same lane but after not gate I use over here the traditional not gates because uh, I built this uh, division on an old project so still I was using at that days the old not gates now uh, our C is the right hand side bit and that's connected to I call it a left shift auxiliary uh, uh, register and the B is connected to our dividend, it goes all the way over here to uh, the full other which adds our selected number so tens and units together and then we're getting the full binary uh, dividend. Now the second the brown selector is a bit more complicated but only a bit just by adding additional uh, connection to AND gate and so this is our function. Uh, so it's a bit different now the settings uh, that I show in an example uh, so A and not A is our initial stage again so actually we have only over here we are connected only to not A and now there is no A it's only not A now the D is actually our difference uh, not like in the previous uh, in our example when that is the the right uh, bit on the right so that's connected to our to our difference to our subtractor and now where it is over here uh, C is again uh, connected to our right hand side bit and uh, something else oh and uh, not B and B that's our actually quotient so they are connected to this place where we're changing quotient to opposite um, yeah now you can see for example uh, this ugly design is actually replacing the old design over here we have an old uh, not gate with the two trains and uh, lug nuts edge detector with the two trains and you can do it exactly the same with just only two trains so instead of four you have uh, two trains only but the design is a bit ugly it works actually the same way so if we if we if we unpause the game and I start the calculation you will see those two signals if you look they almost at the same time green uh, with a bit delay for the this one but it works exactly the same yeah and now the not gate this one has a float as well if you use a little slow train and with the one engine you can get the flashing light over here uh, this one has a float that it the time reaction sometimes is too long when the train is over here and it starts changing the time reaction needs to be uh, it is the way going around the circle and then go up so that's the time reaction can be longer much longer now the OR gate I said this has a float let me show you that float uh, that's the uh, this one I think so when you when you see uh, you didn't see because but now if you watch so actually this is an OR gate this is one input second input so one OR zero should be one but we have zero yeah but this is only for very brief moment but it can destroy any dynamic system 
now we will see that it will improve itself in a moment when this train just changed position uh, oh, and changed position and now we have a proper result so this is unreliable or gate for any dynamic system but it's working perfectly with all those static circuits that I'm, I'm actually creating okay I think that's it uh, that's it uh, it was uh, I think the most uh, the longest video I ever done uh, so uh, in open TTD so two episodes I think almost an hour or even more I didn't check it I'm still before uh, rendering this video so I don't know but I want to finish um, I do apologize for delay uh, my neighbors were uh, renovating house so there was a lot of noise I couldn't I couldn't uh, record anything so today's first quiet weekend actually I'm very happy about that okay uh, thank you for watching I hope it's more understandable and the people who complain that it's difficult to follow they they they, they can say that this is some kind of improvement I hope if not, uh, please let me know. And uh, thank you for uh, any likes. The likes uh, are boosting my morale. So I'm um, thank you for that. Uh, when you see that someone like what you're doing, it's just great. Yeah, it's just great. So thank you for everything. And uh, I hope see you next time. I don't know when I will be making any videos about OpenTTT. Uh, if I will, I don't know. The, the time is crazy. So we live right now in a very crazy time. Uh, unexpected actually so let's see thank you for watching and I hope see you in the next video bye bye